Satisfactory 1.0 is nearing its release, and despite Coffee Stain's most recent video stating various items and features that are not going to be coming for 1.0, it does not mean that 1.0 will be the end of Satisfactory's development. In fact, I have reason to believe quite the opposite is true, both drawing from the recent video and recent live streams, which I'll summarize today. And to call any questions about my plans for Satisfactory 1.0, yes, we will be starting a new level. Let's Play, and we're hopefully going to be kicking it off with a bang, commencing an uncapped marathon stream. But before that, we'll also be striving to reach nuclear power in our update 6 Let's Play. And until then, I want to start touring the very best satisfactory saves the community has to offer for inspiration for my 1.0 factory. So if you think your save is worthy of a factory tour that we will showcase on here, do jump over to my Discord and submit your screenshots in the satisfactory section and tag me. And I'm hoping to have a form up soon that will allow you to submit your save for that as well. Now, leading up to Satisfactory 1.0, there will be a closed beta, which many of us have signed up for, and recent streams have suggested that it may only be open up to as few as 50 to 100 players. This will help keep the many new features coming to the game under wraps for its full release. But before the closed beta starts, the team are rebalancing recipes and fine-tuning the game at the moment. This will certainly affect later tier items and will mean most people will probably want to start over for 1.0 rather than rebalancing and fixing existing lines within their factories. But let's be honest, who wants to keep building a factory when we have automated biomass burners coming to the early tiers? I'm going to be playing around with that for sure, which was actually a welcome surprise to most, though I had mentioned in a recent stream that I expected this change to come for Satisfactory 1.0. But one question still remains in my eyes, which is, does the tractor scene at the start suggest that there will be a way to actively harvest biomass for the burners without manually doing it by hand? Well, we're just going to have to wait and see for that one. Snut also mentioned that the story can be ignored. It's more about giving lore and background to the world, but it's not a necessity to finish the game, which will mainly be driven through the milestones and space elevator tiers. And speaking of 1.0, there are also a few things that have been confirmed in the streams. Following that, I'm also going to cover what's not coming, and more importantly, why I'm betting that we will be seeing more content after 1.0's release. So, what else is confirmed? We showed like a long time ago uh, water physics for the game. Um, will this be in the final release? I we hope so, but it might not actually. Um, it's it's a question of time. And um, they will hopefully be finished for release, but still aren't guaranteed. And they even suggested that it may have been removed. So they're checking up on that at the moment. I'm still hoping that water physics will come and that maybe, perhaps if we're lucky, waterfalls could be used for some kind of hydropower. But that's an idea that's just a little bit out there for now. They do also intend to make dedicated servers stable for 1.0. It's hard to say whether they will be like fully stable, but I mean, that's the goal. And then your Mercer spheres and summer sleep they will be useful mm -hmm. they will be very useful again i'm betting this will probably be something to do with teleportation but that is just me speculating at this point we then have what's not coming for 1.0 as not mentioned there's no plan for the big crap at this stage as they don't feel combat is the main driver of replayability in the game Originally, they had planned for official modding support at full release as well, and though they still plan for official mod support eventually... We do want to add official mod support eventually. Which is one of the telltale signs that development will continue after 1.0, but more on that shortly. But they didn't expect the modding community to be so active and strong pre-official mod support. So given the modding community have put so much work into building a working mod manager, website and mods into the game, they feel that for now they can continue supporting modders, albeit unofficially, without it being too detrimental to 1.0's release. So instead they want to focus on what's missing in the game at the moment. 
Snut then went on to mention that circular foundations won't be coming to 1.0. For me, this was expected and we already have ways in which we can cheat circles in the game. This isn't to say that they will never come to, to satisfactory, but it would potentially require reworking the current build system in order to support that, something they'd obviously avoid doing this late in the game. The same goes for roads using a spleen system, such as what we have with train lines. Personally, I'm happy with building them piece by piece, but they had prototyped a road building system and it just didn't work that well enough to be really worth the time investment. Logic has also been confirmed to not come for 1.0. This is something that I'm, I've am i very much been wanting to have and play around with in game. And yes, we can do it with mods, but I, I wanted it officially. Personally, I'm of the opinion that if we have logic, people can use it to really level up their factories responding to storage or power fluctuations automatically. And the beauty of logic is that if you're not interested in using it, you don't need to use it. Now, this is actually the exact same argument that Coffee Stain have used for not adding it to 1.0. If it's an optional addition, why would they add it for just the few that will use it versus other things that the majority of players may add? I think it's a very fair point and given that they feel minor logic may well be really beneficial to the game that this may be a nice addition developed at a later date whether that's a paid expansion or a free update. There's also some items that will be removed such as the beacons, flower petals and colour cartridges. It wouldn't surprise me if we see more changes to the parts lists as they rebalance everything and we're bound to see more items coming for 1.0 as well. I'm also of the personal belief that 1.0 is going to be a hefty update and they're keeping Stum for now so that 1.0 can be really hyped up closer to the release. Let's be honest, we're now in our sixth gear of early access and we have seen some incredible surprise updates along the line. They've always underpromised and over-delivered and I believe that 1.0 will be no different. But 1.0 will not be the end for Satisfactory and there are a few reasons that point towards the continued support. Firstly, Snut mentioned the team still plan on adding official mod support and that there are many things that they'd like to add to the game. Snut also mentioned in the most recent stream that the team will be roughly the same in size after release. Yes, there will be bugs still prevalent in the game at 1.0 but why would you keep more or less the whole team working on the same project? I'm sure not everyone has the skill sets to work on bug squishing. Or perhaps I've just misread into this and that the team may stay the same but just focus on a different game. But I also want to draw the attention to another game that was developed by Coffee Stain, the legendary but chaotic Goat Simulator. It was a huge success selling over 2.5 million copies. Satisfactory no doubt cost a lot more to develop, but it now has sold over 5.5 million copies and I expect that to increase for 1.0. Now I do draw on these numbers because Goat Simulator went on to have 4 DLC packs and also a sequel as well. And if Satisfactory was a massive success with over half a million sales back when it was an epic exclusive in 2019 then I'm sure they will want to capitalize on the success of Satisfactory. And if they have many plans that they'd love to add to the game, I can only hope that some of them will come to fruition further along. And I'd personally be happy buying DLC to further support the longevity of this amazing game. But would you be up for DLC further down the line? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and why not join me on Twitch or check out my thoughts on what will come for 1.0. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon, most notably our solo cuts Patreon Fireflesh and our Lunas, the Calamity, Ben and Star and our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Brain Slug. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.